Welcome guys to today's class on practical physics topic experiment on rectangular glass prism. We want to see how to plot the graph using these values we got from the results we got from the experiment we just performed. Welcome Welcome guys to today's class on practical physics. In this video, we want to see how to do the glass. Welcome guys to today's class on practical physics. In this video, we want to see how to do the graph plotting on experiment on triangular glass prism or block prism. We have gotten our readings from the video before now. I want to see how to plot the graph. Now, before you do the graph plotting, please note that here you have to put your date, then say a graph of a graph of A in C M against what B in C M. So after you put your date. Say graph of A in CM against what? B in CM. Very important. Then I decide to. Then next thing is to locate your Cartesian axis. Okay? I will just put my Cartesian axis. I just decide to skip one one in case of what I'm to write. Let me see what to write. What determines where to put your Cartesian axis depends on some factor. If you see that if you put your Cartesian axis here and here, and writing figures here will make it look congested, you will see that you have to put it in the next time so that you will see what you are writing. That is, can be a factor to be considered. So, what you do is if you want to learn more about what we are doing in graph plotting, touch the Daniel how to choose appropriate scale in graph plotting. You will see my video on that and learn more about it. Now here is B in CM. Once you write the quantity, you put the unit A in CM. The next thing you have to do is you ask yourself do they specify from the origin? If they did not, it means you can start from the origin or you cannot, you may decide not to start from the origin. I personally will decide not to start from the origin. The reason be that if I start from origin, from 0 to 2.5 is far. And 2.5 is just, you are just covering the distance of 2.5 and 4.7. So from 0 to 2.5, you now see that you are, there will be vacancy between 0 and 2.5 because you start your plotting from 2.5 so because of that look at what I will do for this uh, A axis what I will do is it is called vertical I will say let me start from what 2 here let me start from 2 then for this B the horizontal let me start from 1 I will say 1 comma 2 this first one represents x, y the second one represents y. That means you are starting from 2. Now that will take you to, to know what we will put here. I will ask myself for a, which is this y axis. What is the highest? 4.7. 4.7 minus where I am starting from, which is 2. Which is not 0, but 2. 2. All over how many space? 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm starting from where? The plot is to start. That is from here, not from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Divided by 7. That will be giving me 2.7 over 7. 2.7 over 7. That will be 0 0.386. Approximately. Now, if you are using 0 0.386, that is 2 plus 0 0.3 the answer plus 0 0.3 You now see that this is not an appropriate number, it's not a uniform number. Now, to look for a uniform number you can use, I can decide to 
run it up to 0 0.5. Not just approximation, run up to 0 0.5 because 0 0.5 is a rounded figure such that when you use it here, you can know what you are doing. Okay, 2 plus 0 0.5, 2.5 plus 0 0.5, 3.0. You see that you can easily put it well without making much mistakes. What we mean by using appropriate scale simply mean use a number that you can handle. Using this pattern, it will help you to know the closest number you can use. Whether you can use 0 0.1, whether you can use 1, whether you can use 2, and all have you. This is not a, an appropriate number. It's not a uniform number. So I'll take it to 0 0.5 and use it well so that it can work well. Then this is 3.5. This is 4.0. This is 4.5. IS number is 4.7. Okay, 5.0. You can see everything is well accommodated. Then come to horizontal. We started from 1 because 1 is closest to 1.69. It's closest to it. Instead of starting from 0, which is further from 1.6, I start from 1. Somebody can say, let this start from 1.5. But I decided to start from 1 to see that also by putting the scale, everything will balance well. Okay, 3.17 minus 1. 3.17 minus 1 will be giving me 2.17 all over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all over 7. 2.17 divided by 7, 0 0.31. Now, if I'm using 0 0.31, this 0 0.31 will be difficult for me to handle. 1.31, 2.31, 3.31, 4.31, 5.31. It might be very difficult for me because it is in a two decimal places. Now, I can say, let me take it to a simpler number. Take it up to a simpler number I can handle. This is 0 0.5. I can handle 0 0.5 and because of that I will use it. 1 plus 0 0.5, 1.5, 2.0, 3. You see how it's sweet while writing it. I don't need to press calculator because I am using a simpler number I can handle. But if it is 0 0.31, 0 0.31 plus 1, 1.31 plus 1, at a point you might say, let me use calculator so that you will not make mistake. But with 0 0.5, it will be flat while uh, pronouncing it. This is 3.5. The higher is 3.17. So 3.5, I've covered it. You can see we have gotten our scale. You can now come and say, for my scale, in, okay, 2CM represent this, min this minus is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 now I will not write unit what I will write is centimeter because unit of this is centimeter in or on a cm axis then 2 cm represent 0 0.5 cm in b cm what axis we have put our scale that means your date your title, level your Cartesian axis, then your skill. Very important for you to do it before plotting your graph. Now, what you now do is 2.5 against 1.69. 2.5 against 1.69. 1.69 can fall around here. Then 3.2 against 2.17. 3.2 against 2.17. This is around here. 3.83 against 2.59. 3.83. This is 3.5. 3.83 should be around here. Against 2.59. Then. 4.33 against 2.93. 
4.70 against 3.17. So after putting your point, next is to work. Yes, we have succeeded to put our line of best fit on it. Now next thing is to put your triangle so that you get your slope. To put it, make sure that it covers at, uh, like two thirds of your graph. Make sure that the triangle is a big enough. You know that slope of a set line is always collinear. Yes, so whether you make it to be big or small, you will get the same slope or a close range slope, a similar slope. Yes. So we have succeeded to locate our word triangle. Here we'll be changing A and here we'll be changing B. Okay, then next thing is for us to get our what the final value for your slope here is 5.5 5.5 minus here is 2.5 we should be giving 3 cm then for here here is 3.6 approximately then here is uh, minus 1 1.6 that will be giving you 2 equal to 2 cm we are using approximated answer from the graph because we are using a sketch of the graph not the real standard wire graph so what you will do is that you now say slow equals to change in A over change in B and that will be 3 cm or over 2 cm. That will be giving you 1.5. This is the refractive index of this graph. Crazy. Yes. So we have been able to get it. Remember we say it has a range. That the range is 1.46 to 1.54. Answer we got false in the range. So we we'll mark it good. Now we have gotten the slope. Estimate the error in the slope. Wow. In this, only one point is very close to the line but not on the line so that one point that is very close to the line i'll put my ruler on it i'll put my ruler on it such that i can get a line that will be parallel to the line of best fit so look at the point and look at the line that is parallel to line of best fit. So what I will now do is that once I put the line, I will now put the ruler vertical. I'll put the ruler vertical so I am to get this point. And also get this point. I can call this is 3.5, this is 3. This is 3, 3.1, 3 3.2, 3 3.3, 3 3.4. This is 3, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4. 3, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, then 3.5. So, I can take care to be 3.4, take care to be 3.3. Now, error in the slope, SG equals to 4W over NR, where your W is a vertical scatter, which you get from putting your ruler vertical, I mean, parallel to your line of best fit and 
and locate it to that point that that didn't enter in the line. If they are two, when you put this parallel line, you also put the other one, the same parallel parallel to the line of first speed. That is, if they are two, look at your line of first speed. This line fell out, this point fell out. What you do is you draw a parallel line, draw a parallel line, then use your ruler, place it vertical, and what? Connect it. Take the value, take the value, subtract. That is what we mean by vertical scatter. This is what we call vertical scatter W. But if it is only one point that fell out, put only one parallel line, then what you now do, put your ruler, put your ruler and get a vertical, a perfect vertical line. Take this value, take this value. That is it then this minus this you get it so with that four times w will now be 3.4 minus 3.4 minus 3.3 that is 0 0.1 3.4 minus 3.3 that is 0 0.1 all over any means how many points do we plot one two three four five five points Arrow means your horizontal minus this minus this. Then you start having 3.17 minus 1.69. 3.17 minus 1.69. That is 1.8. I will write 1.8. 1.48. So the arrow means range of the horizontal, the highest minus the lowest, you write. Then, any means the number of points you plotted. Four is constant. W means your vertical scatter. You don't get the value. The value will be 4 times 0 0.1 divided by bracket 5 times 1.48. That will be giving you 0 0.054. Zero point zero five four, no unit. Refractive index of a glass has no unit. That means our slope is one point five zero plus or minus zero point zero five four. One point five zero plus or minus zero point zero five four. That is how to package your slope. Okay, now we have gotten our slope and we have gotten error in the slope. They said state what physical quantity A represents. From your Snell's law, Snell's law says that sine I over sine R will give you a refractive index. Now, from this experiment, you notice that it is A over B. Change in A or over change in B will give you refractive index. That means that A is equivalent to sign of incidence. A is equivalent to sign of incidence. A is equivalent to what? Sign I. Yes. That is sign of angle of incidence. That is what A is equivalent. That is the quick physical quantity it represents.